right before this ceremony, I raced down the stairs. It, I was I was literally running across. It was like something straight out of like a comedy situation. <laughs> but I'm like running across down these wooden steps into this wooden cabin. And I fed her really quick right before the ceremony. Then I run back up. Then I do the ceremony and more formals. And by now it's snow slush and it's dinner time. And instead of eating dinner, I run down, mm -hmm. feed her, run back. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. Welcome to the podcast, uh, Catherine. I'm excited to chat today. This is uh, this is going to be a fun topic, I think. Uh, going to be yes. a different topic for me. I feel like uh -huh. I am going to be like the uh, the outsider of just like you know all of this. Like I, I mean, I've been married for ten years. I have two mm -hmm. daughters. I have a little knowledge of womanhood. Um, However, definitely not to uh, the extent that you have. Um, but yeah, Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm very thankful for you to kind of take me with this topic too, of course, because it's like one of those, like, oh, I don't know if that's comfortable for me. <laughs> you know, I right, get it. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like it's one of those things that have been like put under the table for so long that it mm -hmm. just, you know, needs to be talked about a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I am all about having like the uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and not that this conversation is going to be uncomfortable or anything, <clears throat> but just like, like you said, it's, it's kind of been the topic of womanhood has been kind of pushed under the table. Um, I'm sure even for like women talking to other women of just like, I don't know, can we like really even talk about this? Uh, mm -hmm. and there are, you know, a bunch of other, uh, other topics and, and conversations that haven't been as open and free of just like, this is something we can talk about uh, yeah. or that, you know, some people um, would just be like, Oh, uh, the woes of womanhood. I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a, like a fun topic. That doesn't sound like no. a, like a, how do I get my next 10,000 followers on Instagram type topic? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, um, very grateful for you uh, having this conversation with me today and um, just excited to see where we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Especially as it relates to our industry specifically too. Yes. On things that you cannot postpone and you can't control. Right. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Before we get into all of that, I want to get to know you mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, sure. And we could talk about, you know, your 20 plus years of uh photography experience and, and all of yeah. that, um, which is, is very cool. Um, however, I find that I get to know people a lot better by just like random questions and just yes, like please. <laughs> finding out, uh, like what you like and all that. So I have stolen a bunch of questions from Stephen Colbert and then added some of my own. So I okay. have, um, 17 here. We're not going to go through oh, all 17. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you just pick uh, two numbers between one and 17, and I'll ask you a couple questions. Okay, let's do 11. 11? Uh-huh. Okay, 11 is, okay, um, for for water, flat or sparkling? Oh, you know, sparkling. Because if there was an op option like water with ice. Oh, yeah. But sparkling water, LaCroix. Yep. Ooh, Addiction look right. Okay. Do you do you have a favorite? Um, what do they call them? Essences, uh, not Is quite like flavors. Pample mousse. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the like grapefruit oh, one. Grapefruit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's really cool. Good. I I do like that. I'm not a big grapefruit fan of just like the fruit itself. Um, mm -hmm. Same. But I I, I do like I do like the Lacroix, um, and. Uh, I, there was a, a band, I actually still follow them on TikTok now, uh, but I was really big into them in high school called Pomplamoose. And oh. uh, that's whenever I learned that that is French for grapefruit. And I was like, yeah. oh, cool. Little I fun know. trivia fact. Um, yeah, but I yeah. have no clue. I have to look it up too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know what I'm drinking here. What is this thing? <laughs> Just know it's fresh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, we got some, some grapefruit LaCroix. What yes. is your second number? 
Okay, my second number will be six. Six. Okay. Ooh, what was your first concert? Oh my goodness, this is going to be a little hilarious. Okay. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to put my coffee down. I'm bracing <laughs> myself. I'm ready for this. Michael W. Smith and Point of Grace oh, in my yes. little tiny town's high school. Yes, that is so good. People might um, Google that later. <laughs> okay, I think they were at my first concert as well. So my first concert was like a festival type uh-huh. deal. Um, and it was, I, I live in Texas, but um, we, we, we lived in an RV for a couple of years and I was homeschooled. And we took a road trip up to Minnesota during mm. one summer. Uh, following uh, like this evangelist preacher uh, who was from our church and uh, and they had a festival in Minnesota in like 1999 and it was Michael W. Smith and Point of Grace and that's hilarious uh, Amy Grant and yeah. DC Talk oh Newsboys all Don't the good talk. <laughs> yes yes all the the Jesus freak uh, oh, I think Jesus goodness. freak was out by then it should have been mm-hmm. by 99 yeah it would have been out by then uh but yeah no that's awesome and they that's so hilarious. did they play at your high school yeah, at our like little town's little... high school, our tiny, tiny little town, Linden, Washington. Basically, it's like Canadian border. It's like five minutes south of the border. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So well, sweet. Yeah, I definitely know you a lot better now. I'm like, we've connected <laughs> on Pomplanus and yes. on our early Old childhood Christian music. <laughs> yeah. the, all, oh, every, all the bands so that were in the CCM magazine. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that that is great. Um, now that we know Catherine, um, uh, t- tell us a little about about uh, like where you're where you're based now and all that. Yeah. You're still not in Washington, right? You're you're in California. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah. And I actually just celebrated ten years full time in San Diego. Nice. Um, Congratulations. So, thank you. Thank you. So I've been, we've been in San Diego though. I think we're creeping up on 12 years. Okay. Um, and yeah. Point Loma, Very cool. right by SeaWorld. Yes. Yeah. That's great. I love, um, I would say that's my favorite part of California. I've, I've been to a lot of the coast there. I haven't done a lot of like the Western, or wait, no, Eastern California, like the mountains and all of that. But mm-hmm. yeah, any any time that I get work or go to conferences or something like in the San Diego area, yeah. like La Jolla and yeah, all, all of that is just, I love it. So that's yeah. cool that you've been there 12 years now. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Very yeah, cool. And then it. what kind of photography do you mostly do? Yeah. So I do lifestyle, family, and wedding photography. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then with like lifestyle, is that more of like the candid kind of real moments, less of the like post studio work type deal? Yes. However, the clients always want a little bit of those pose captures too. Yeah. So that's kind of where I start off and then, you know, we go into more of the playful moments to nice. where it's not just, you know, taking you back to that really uncomfortable. We go to JC Penny yes. to get that family picture. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> kind of trying to reverse the concept of, you know, just that drudgery feeling of like, I got to take pictures today. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, I, I find that like pretty much anyone, even if they really identify with and like connect with your photos of like those real moments and like playful stuff with the kids, they're always just like, we still want that one of everyone looking at the camera, yeah. smiling, every time, put up over the mantle, send to the parents, yeah. um, grandparents, all that. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Cool. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll do that one. And then yeah. the rest of the hour <laughs> is going to be what I want to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's cool. Okay. So, so we're talking about, about womanhood today. We're talking about, yeah. um, yeah, the, the, the woes of womanhood and, yeah. um, and just like, 
all, all of that, everything. Um, what are like, I mean, obviously I am not a woman. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I can assume what, what some of the woes are, but could you like maybe break Absolutely. down some of the woes of womanhood and like how yeah, they can please. affect your mm-hmm. business? Yeah. So I am a full-time family and wedding photographer. And there are a lot of things that us women are faced with that we're kind of expected to just deal with and then keep going. But the reality is, is some of the things that our bodies go through kind of give us the feeling that we just need to quit or like, I can't do both or I can't Mm -hmm. continue because how can I do this if I need to like, you know, go to the doctor X, Y, Z, how many times a week to get this blood drawn or what have you, you know, emergency situations, whatever. And oftentimes women, instead of um, continuing to figure out or to even know that they can maintain their business, maintain a successful business and have a growing business while they are going through those things, that concept just doesn't, you know, scream in their heads like, I can do this. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, let's spell some things out, right? So I've had a couple miscarriages and I've had an ectopic pregnancy. I've mm. been on bed rest with our beautiful little rainbow girl, Jade. She's six years old. She's beautiful. Nice. But I had a very critical pregnancy with her to where I had to go on bed rest at 19 weeks in the middle of wedding season. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So for five months, I was on bed rest. Three of those weeks were hospital bed rest. Um, and then, you know, you're talking about post situation. You mm-hmm. have a mom who's producing milk and you're at a wedding. And how do you navigate that? You know, right. there's different things like that. Or somebody going through IVF who needs shots or someone who has endometriosis and they're keeling over in the bathroom with like this like sharp shooting pain. Mm-hmm. Um you know, so, so much of that is not talked about. Like you said, it's, it almost, um, and then if we are kind of told that if we talk about this too, and we draw attention to it where we're honest about it, then we're not necessarily the stronger business person right? that can just leave their stuff at the door. You know what I mean? Mm. And leave yeah, yourself like the door. Is, don't this talk is about personal it. stuff. Like, don't. Yeah, yeah. Like that whole thing, which I, I know was like, well, I say was. It probably still is very big. I just haven't been in a nine to five job in a, a long time. Yeah. But I remember that even like for me of just like you know whatever is going on in your personal life, yeah. like leave that at the door and, yeah. and come in. And right. uh, like, that is, that is very personal. And, yeah. but it's also like physical in your body. Yeah. You can't just mm-hmm. like be like, well, I am not going to have these <laughs> endometriosis cramps right now. Right. I'm just going to leave that outside in the car and I'll be fine today. Yeah. Like, that's not something you can physically do. Right. And we're told we need to say, Oh, you know what? I'm unable to talk today. I can talk to you tomorrow at this time. Most likely I'll have to get back to you kind of thing like that. Not to even bring honesty to the door with your clients and just be like, Mm -hmm. Hey, I just need you to know that this is something I'm dealing with today. And I really appreciate your grace and your understanding. Is there any way that you can talk tomorrow? Can I text you? Like, if I'm feeling better or something like that, you know, if that second answer is often seen as weak or there's the fear, the internal fear of us that like, okay, if I say that to them, am I going to lose business? Is my business going to suffer because of that? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's just a big thing that I've been very passionate about. And mostly because I've lived through a lot of it. You know, I've been in the bathroom during the reception pumping, sitting on the floor and having drunk women bang on the door and be like, get out X, Y, Z, you know, whatever they want to call me. 
you know, different things like that. And yeah, yeah. just, but my heart is to try and teach some of the things that I have done to maintain a successful and growing business, despite my like million things <laughs> that I've been kind of forced to overcome, but also have chosen to put um, some systems in place to make sure that my passion and my uh, my love of photography mm. is not lost. Yeah. Also. Yeah. What, what kind of systems do you, can you put in place for something like that? Like, especially for like being a wedding photographer and knowing that like every two hours you're going to have to pump or, you know, yeah. you can't like, you know, bring your baby along. I guess you can, if you're just like, if that's your <laughs> brand and that's, <laughs> that's your level of, of personal uh, space, you could, yeah. but uh, like, how do you, like, what kind of systems do you put in place when you know, yeah this is what the wedding day is going to look like, or this right. is what, uh, you know, uh, what this, you know, I, I can see that later this week I have a photo shoot and I am, right. you know, in so much pain right now. Yeah. How do you, what can you do to kind of prepare for that? Yeah. Well, I have a story first. I, okay. um, I think it was about two months or so after I had my daughter, Jade, and she was refusing to take any kind of bottle. Uh-huh. And so my client's wedding was far enough away. It was an hour away in Julian. It's a cute little country town. And I think it was, I mean, it was snowing. So I, it could have been April. So I can't remember exactly. It was, wait, no, I guess two months. <laughs> it would have been closer to December. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about her birthday. Wait, I do know her birthday. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. So I didn't, we didn't know what to do because how is she going to eat? How is she right. going to be okay? And we ended up booking one of the lodges that is on that like venue. At the, nice. <laughs> yeah. At the venue. Um, and so before, you know, I had fed her, left for my starting time to start the formals and all the things. Uh, right before the ceremony, I raced down the stairs. It, I, was, I was literally running across. It was like something straight out of like a comedy situation. <laughs> but I'm like running across down these wooden steps into this wooden cabin. And I fed her really quick right before the ceremony. Then I run back up. Then I do the ceremony and more formals. And by now it's snow slush and it's dinner time. And instead of eating dinner, I run down, mm -hmm. feed her, run back. <laughs> like it was ridiculous, but like that's, you know, so part of it is getting scrappy, right? Right. Yeah. But there are actual things that you can do. Um, we talked a little bit earlier before we were recording about a freebie that I have created too. I've got like a few thought provoking yeah, yeah. kind of steps that can prepare uh, people to at least be ready for these situations and to be able to overcome them to where your business doesn't suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also fine. Like even if you're in the season of like, I don't even care if my business grows at this point. I just want to keep my clients happy and I want to maintain my business, yeah. you know? And I think that is such a beautiful goal as well. Um, oh, like yeah. whatever is within your capacity. Yeah. Um, Cause we go through like those waves of just like, everything is great. Like yeah. body feels great. Like my life is going really well right now. I have so much bandwidth to just like pour into my business and grow. Mm -hmm. And then other times of just like life is terrible. I feel terrible. Yeah. I have yeah. 10 minutes tops to like get on emails. And then like, I, I have definitely gone through those uh, seasons myself. And like, there are uh, a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself and not mm -hmm. just like be like, well, I'm going to have to push through this and keep yeah. up the same level. Sometimes it is like reassessing everything. and like, can I step back for a little bit and like, just kind of pump the brakes and, and mm -hmm. not like 
run full steam ahead like I have been, but uh, giving my my mind and my body uh, and you know mental health just a little bit of room to breathe. Uh, yeah, because if if you do push too hard, uh, I have. I have seen uh, first person. If you push too hard uh, in a lot of those places, your business suffers too, uh, because uh, you need to be healthy for yes. your business to be healthy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And sometimes the answer is that you need to step back. You know, mm-hmm. but I think the main thing is is that when people feel that there is no other way, that's where right. I want to pop in and be like, hey. Hi. Yes. Yeah. You can do hard can things. Help. Yeah. I can help. You can do hard things. You can keep your business going. And this is a season. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and for a lot of women, it's a forever ending season until, you know, they have a hysterectomy or they have something like that go on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's ways to you know, maintain your business despite what your situation is, temporary or long-term. Um, and so in this uh, freebie that I think you're going to share with people. Yeah, it, yeah, we'll have it in the show notes and everything for everyone to download. Awesome. Yeah. So I kind of go over creating a backup plan that actually works. Okay. So – you know, how many times do you hear from people like, oh, they have a backup plan, but like, do they have a backup plan? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm guilty, or, you know, in the earlier days of not necessarily having a backup plan because half the time that actually doesn't arise until you're forced to create a backup plan. Right. Right. And usually that is like last minute of like, yeah. oh, things are happening now. I need yeah. a backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. Or even talking like relating to the pandemic, right? So this situation Mm -hmm. is not necessarily so honed in on, um, you know, the woes of womanhood in business. It's also when there's a recession, it's when there's inflation, it's when there's a pandemic. It's how to overcome and and keep your business when things get hard and when the unexpected happens. Mm -hmm. So having that backup plan is vital. But to actually know when you tell your client you have a backup plan that you actually physically believe, like, I know I have a backup plan. Like, I know I can text XYZ associates and reach out to them and see if they are going to be able to associate lead for my wedding today because I just miscarried and I cannot get off the couch and you know, Mm. this thing is happening or what have you. Right. So I call these people and they answer and they're like, yes, Catherine, I'll be there. And obviously paid work. Right. Right. But they're still there for you. That's one backup. The other is to have another situation. Like, so for me, it would be, I have such a, a wonderful I'm very thankful for my network in the wedding industry, Mm -hmm. you know, so reaching out to coordinators, what other photographers that if they can text, you know, five coordinators or five photographers each or what have you, you know, so that those people, whoever is available can contact me and then we can get the details going. Um, The other thing would be like the honey book uh, opportunities page, Mm -hmm. which is, basically like a directory for all human all like wedding professionals right yeah it's so good (laughs) it's so good and i feel like they're i think i saw an email that they're taking it away but i'm not sure um but like but i know they're going through a lot of changes right now they're going through a lot of changes yeah because i know that that takes a lot of time for them but yeah so it's having steps that you can take when you are uh, breastfeeding and you get mastitis and you have a fever and Mm. you just physically actually cannot be the best for your client. You need to have a backup plan. Um, So it kind of goes over some different ways to do that. Okay. And then also like networking, doing the work, 
getting yes. to know people in your industry, like-minded people, people with good values, people who are going to show up for you that you also want to show up for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those connections are gold. I, uh, I'm a huge advocate of networking and connections and community and like fostering that where, um, you can reach out to someone. I mean, I've been the recipient of many texts of just like, Hey, either, you know, I need someone to cover for me for later today, or so-and-so is looking for someone to associate their wedding. Cause you know, uh, a family member just passed away and they're not, not mentally there. They want to, they need to be with their, their family and they need someone to take this wedding and someone Mm -hmm. that like having that community and network of people that you trust Mm -hmm. are going to, um, to be great for Mm -hmm. your clients when you know, like that it also takes a lot of humility of yourself to, to just be like, I know that I am not at a hundred percent Yeah, and I'm not going to, to be able to provide my clients with what uh, they are needing. So I'm going to reach out to someone else. Incredibly difficult to have those conversations. Oh yeah. Really hard. And the other thing I touch on too is honesty, like honesty, be honest with your clients. Like I don't think we give humans enough credit. You know, there is a lot of empathy and Mm -hmm. a lot of people actually can sympathize with what you're going through. If you're real with them. Yes. But if you're hiding it and, you know, feeling horrible and trying to push through and you're not going to do your best, what's the result is they're going to see that reflected not only on their happy day, but also in the images post or whatever situation that could be florals or um, coordination or different things throughout the wedding and, just, um, you know, all the different jobs within the wedding. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It can just, the ripple effects of that, of you kind of having a lot of pride in those mm-hmm. situations where you just really got to be real. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. it results in a bad review. And then what happens when a bad review comes is you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then there's yeah. self doubt and then you just don't try as hard. And yeah. Yeah. And then it's just, it's a continuing cycle of, well, I don't feel like I can do this. I, I don't yeah. have that creativity to, to photograph anymore, but I'm still going to hide that. And I'm going to show up for the people that have already paid me and not be honest. And like, there's, yeah. there's something about that, just that honesty of, Hey, I've got a level with you. Like this may not be. I mean, obviously not what you're wanting as the client, Mm -hmm. Um, but this is where I am. And, uh, and, and sometimes it is like, Hey, I, I can't do like, I can't photograph your family today. Mm -hmm. Can we reschedule for next week or something? Yeah. Like, does that work? Or I, I can reach out to one of my other photographers to photograph right. you because I, I physically the deal. cannot. Yeah. Sweeten the deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, that, that kind of honesty, like you said, like that goes so far with people. Cause a lot of times we like make up stuff in our head of, well, if I tell them this, they're going to think this and they're going to, you know, be like, Oh no, well I need a refund and I'm going to leave a one-star review and I'm going to tell everyone how horrible or this sue is. Us, right? Or sue God us. Said. Yeah. Yeah. Like so many things, but yeah, when you're real with them, mm-hmm. it now it puts that ball in their court then of like how they're going to respond and react in that situation. And right. so many people saw that not just women throughout the wedding industry in the last three years with COVID. Right. So oh, there's yeah. a lot of clients who are like, Hey, if you have COVID, I don't want you to, <laughs> you right. know, so kind of thing. And then there would be people and, you know, I was getting texts all the time for different people who have had come down with it, who were looking for backups and things like that. But mm-hmm. um, being yeah. honest and real, then people are like, well, they didn't, they couldn't control that. And what? you had the end of the day have to believe in your head. They believe that I'm being honest about being sick. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. You know, because we do that mental twist. You're like, uh, do you you just want a day off? Is that what this is? I know. 
<laughs> that that new series on Netflix is out and you just want to binge all day. That's what. Okay. Yeah, for real, uh, right? But and <laughs> there might be a handful of people that think that. Yeah. But the majority of people, like you said, like we don't uh give humans the the benefit of the doubt as as much as we mm-hmm. should. Like people will yeah. most people will be like they'll they'll be em- empathetic with you uh, yeah. of just like okay yeah no i'm sorry you're, right. you're not you're not feeling well you're not doing well whatever it is like yes we can we can accommodate that uh, yeah. I, I you you mentioned that about like uh, that honesty of uh like not hiding stuff i uh, used to have a video team that worked with me and uh they were great until they weren't and um just like slow deliveries you know uh months after they were supposed to deliver me the videos to like proof and quality check before sending them out and i kept uh kind of like hiding that from my clients of just like no this is my stuff i'm just gonna i'll deal with this like they don't need to know what's going on and finally one of them like was just like can you just tell us when we're going to get our videos and i was like i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know i've been working on it like i i've uh and and that once once i said that and like explained um a little bit of the situation i didn't have to go into super great detail of what exactly was going on but just was more upfront with them about the situation Mm -hmm. then they were like oh um yeah that sucks like i'm sorry that you're going through that like i did they didn't even know that i was going through anything they just thought i was you know twiddling my thumbs over here just like eh, i don't know i'll get to your videos yeah. whenever we get to it and they're like okay and they know we you're understand just one now. person too right and so yeah like okay it's doing work of so many more people now uh-huh uh-huh yeah and then mm-hmm. uh and then they that saved me from uh i'm sure you know many like negative reviews uh yeah and and to where uh, even even one of them I didn't even ask them for reviews because I was like honestly I, if it's not five stars I don't think I really want a review and I don't feel like yeah. you got the the five star treatment and <laughs> the they gave me that we cherry pick who we send that email I out know to. Hey, I know I'm just gonna wanna... just gonna uncheck this one from my scheduled uh, <laughs> emails uh, but they they did give me a five star review and just mm-hmm. and and even mentioned that in the review of just like you know. It, it wasn't the most timely, but he kept us updated and all of that. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. That I mean, there's something. so many other parts of the process that matter, right? Yes. And but, it's like, you're still doing the work. You still had the consult call. You still booked them. You sent them a contract. You have, you're paying for the systems that carry the contract and you're, you did the engagement photos or you know, whatever. It's like, you've done Mm -hmm. all this work up until now. I know you're faced with a hiccup and you have to, you know, face that straight on and how you deal with those unexpected situations in life makes a huge difference on the reactions post and, you know, again, ultimately the success and the continuation of your business. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like with that, like, um, I don't know, kind of, uh, from, from everything that we've talked about already, like, what is one thing that you want, even, even if it's not something that we already talked about, but what is one thing that you want the listeners to really take away from our conversation today and like implement in, uh, their business moving forward? Yeah. Well, first would be just knowing that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that it will actually do more good to talk about it and to figure it out and to try and create intentional systems that will help with your business, like the movement of it continuing to go forward, um, that are actually possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I am a example of that I've gone through so many different things. Like I've even, you know, miscarried on a wedding day. Like there's just been so many different weird things. Right. Um, but having those backup plans, maintaining honesty with my clientele, 
and doing the work beforehand, networking and finding my people and not just taking and taking and taking from those people, but giving, paying them well, um, showing up when they need help and helping them out when they need help, offering to do headshots for them or different things like that, you know, Mm -hmm. goes both ways. But just that you don't have to give up if you don't want to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the main thing is just the people that truly have a drive and a passion and they just feel like they can't get over this hurdle. And, you know, it, doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to bring in buckets of money, but you are going to get through it. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a season most likely, or at least until you get your groove. Yes. Yeah. 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 And like you mentioned it again, that community and networking is so important to uh, entrepreneurs, especially like us, like solopreneurs. If you're just, Mm -hmm. a a one person team, it gets so lonely. And, you know, we don't have, I I did a, a a virtual uh, like work room where we were just like editing together over zoom and just chatting with other photographers yesterday. And it was so much fun. There was like five five or six of us there and we just chatted about different things. And we're talking about like conferences that we went to recently or like movies and stuff that we were watching. And it was just fun. It felt like, you know, just sitting next to each other at a coffee shop or something. Yeah. Uh, but like idea. we as solopreneurs don't have community a lot of times because we yeah, are very lonely place. sitting at our house on the couch, on the laptop, whatever, editing our photos. It, it is a lonely place. And having mm-hmm. that community of people that you trust and that trust you is just is so, so important um, yeah. in, in times that are, are fine that are good uh Mm -hmm. to to like rally around each other and just to be there for each other and and have those friends and community but especially in times where you are not feeling great where you do need to call that that plan b of just like hey guys like that text thread or that you know local facebook group of uh i i need help like uh there's I, i started a local facebook uh, group for photographers there's like a couple hundred here locally and i see in there constantly of just like hey um my kids messed up my uh my gray you know backdrop and i'm i'm taking these headshots tomorrow does anybody have one that you can just like leave yeah. and it's like oh yeah send me your address i'll put it in the mailbox or whatever and it's just like people showing up for each other and it it yeah. makes my heart so happy like seeing that um mm-hmm. and that is something that if you're not a part of uh listeners um definitely search out for those groups um and if there aren't groups around uh then be like me because whenever i moved here there was not <laughs> something and i was like you know what i'm just gonna create something and hopefully yeah. it'll turn into to something yeah. and, and it has but it's like been great Social media is a fantastic tool. Oh, yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. Like Instagram, like find, okay, be intentional. Like what, what venue, what venues do you want to, like, let's say you're a wedding photographer. What venues do you want to shoot at? You know, and then you look at that venue and you start following the people and you start following the coordinators that are posting about that. Mm -hmm. But then you check them out and you start following them and see if, their values align if how their reviews are, how they treat their clientele, um, you know, making sure that you'll actually jive with them, that it'll be a party when you have a wedding together. Like it's actually fun, you know, working together. Um, but then scheduling that coffee date, actually buying them coffee and be like, Hey, I love your work. I love what you do. But like genuinely meaning it and not being sneaky, you know. Right. Yeah. No ulterior Shady. motives of like, no. Well, I'm going to take you out to coffee so that you'll do this for me. Uh, because yeah. remember when I bought you that $6 coffee? You owe me kind of thing. Yeah. 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 But, but just genuine. for the sake of expanding mm. your network and yeah. again, not being alone, right? And having the opportunity where you can be like, hey, we're going to have a little virtual Zoom edit sesh bring oh, your yeah. coffee of choice and you know whatever so. yeah, yeah yeah that's the best it's yeah. it's so good especially if you're feeling lonely because uh, mm-hmm. there have definitely been seasons that i have 
felt more uh, alone uh, here yeah. as an entrepreneur, especially like whenever you've got like your head down in your business, like I gotta, I gotta work on this. I gotta do that. I don't have time. You know, what if I join this virtual work and then we're just chatting for three hours and then I didn't get any work done at all. It's like, yeah, that's a possibility if you let it happen, but you can also be like, Hey guys, I'm going to listen to the conversation. I really have to finish these emails or whatever. Yeah. Like there's, uh, again, that, that openness and honesty of, Hey, I want to be here for community. However, like today I'm just yeah. going to be listening. Yeah. Uh, but no, I love it. Uh, I, I think that is so good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. As we, um, as we kind of wrap up the conversation, there's part of the show that I like to do where we talk about what we're loving. Um, and then we can get to where like people can follow you and, and where they can reach out sure. and, uh, and, and network and, and, and get network. to know you on social media. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, uh, what are you loving this week? Catherine could be literally anything, a uh, new yes. book, TV show, whatever. Okay. Well, I'm a big coffee connoisseur. Ooh, okay. we, we is that why you asked about, about what that. coffee I was drinking when we jumped on earlier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big coffee person for sure. Nice. Um, so recently I've been loving our little neighbor, little kiosk drive through mm. Americano with a little bit of steamed eggnog. Has been Ooh, like my yeah. jam. Movie. Very seasonal. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. yeah I... I think I've had some coffee with eggnog before, or at least like those flavorings. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was really good. I am not a big eggnog person, uh-huh. um, like making it fresh or whatever. Uh, I've yeah. had those at the the Christmas gatherings, the the fall festivals and stuff. And yeah. um, I'm more of an apple cider person. But, oh, that's um, good too. but yeah, that with uh, mixed in with coffee, like all those flavors yeah. go really, really well. A little together. steamed. It has to be steamed though, so <clears throat> that it doesn't affect the temperature of coffee. Yes. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good poll situation, right? Like eggnog, mm-hmm. lover, yes or no? Half the time. It's, I feel like it's almost 50, 50, but. Oh yeah. I yeah. hate it. Right. Yeah. It's, it is definitely one of those dividing drinks where it's just like, Oh, mm-hmm. I love this so much. And then other mm-hmm. people are just like, I, I hate this so much. Like, I like they even can't even look at it. it. Like it's like yeah. a textural. <laughs> like, I can't even walk down the dairy aisle in, <laughs> in the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's uh, funny. Yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. I, I love those, like that joy. little drive through kiosk thing that has been uh-huh. one of the best uh changes in coffee shops i think yeah um because so, so many fun. times i wanted to like help out local or not help out but like put my money toward local coffee shops and like mm-hmm. i really liked that they tend to do more experimental type flavors and stuff yeah the but, coffee just overall tends to be a little better too it is, yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's usually from like local roasters or something, mm-hmm. and they're not like these giant bags that are getting shipped across the state or from other countries or whatever. Uh, yeah. But yeah, with with Littles in the car, I was like, I'm not just going to like oh, unbuckle all the car seats and take everyone in just to get a coffee. But now that there's drive throughs in yeah. so many local yeah. spots. I'm like, this is great. I can yeah. still support local and I don't right. have to get out of the car. So, well, when Jade was younger, that. you know, mm-hmm. I had to re- reinvent me time. I was trying mm-hmm. to like mentally mm-hmm. not look at certain things as like, this is hard. Like, I actually physically need to be by myself, doing my own thing for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was trying to think of different t- times or different ways that I could actually um, just refresh without having to necessarily be fully alone, you yeah. know? So right. half the time that would be like in the car. She's in the car seat. She's stuck. She can't go anywhere. <laughs> nope. You know? And I would either, depending on the time of her age, I would either have a certain podcast on or music. Half the time it's music mm. that I just you know, refuels me Um, and go through a coffee shop, get a coffee, go for a little drive, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. I used to do, um, 
uh, like nap time drives. Yeah. Uh, especially like with uh, our first when he was really little of just like on the weekend when I was at home, mm-hmm. like giving, giving my wife some, some alone time as well. Yeah. And really just good. put him in his car seat and then he would pass out and yeah. I would just uh, drive around and listen to a podcast, go get a coffee, that same sort of thing of just like, we're still together. He's still getting his nap and all of that. Yeah. But also I got my, my me time. Uh, yeah. So Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. What am I loving this week? Um, I uh, I am loving the uh, the fair, the carnival. I don't know what it's called. Oh. Um, we had one that came into town earlier this week, I think, or I don't know. It it left earlier this week. Um, but we uh, it's like one of those little traveling ones that are, you know, a little sketchy. Um, but luckily our kids are stuff? with no? not quite like not a, yeah, I guess it's not a carnival. Uh, so like they didn't have like lions and elephants mm. and stuff. It was, I, I think it's more of like a fair uh, okay. of like uh, with the Ferris wheel and with uh, like little um, like throwing darts at a balloon to, pop and get a prize and and stuff like that and this was the first year that we had gone where all three of our kids could participate in things i think last time was a couple years ago when our youngest was like maybe a year old if Mm -hmm. if not younger than that and she was pretty much just like strapped to us uh the whole time and this time everyone was like riding rides by themselves and took the girls on the ferris wheel and they thought that was the best thing ever because we were so high up in the air and just yeah that time and it was uh right after a cool front so we got a little bit of cool crisp weather that Mm -hmm. evening too so yeah i was loving that i took uh one of my uh film cameras with me with like some expired uh, 35 millimeter film. And I was like, I'm just going to shoot this Test and, it. uh, yeah. See what yeah. Happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, any of the expired stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to like take this to yeah. a paid gig, but yeah. I'll, I'll do some personal work with it. And, uh, so yeah. that should recently, be getting those scans back soon. Oh, that's awesome. I was recently yeah. gifted, um, a camera that was my grandpa's that I never knew. Oh, very had. cool. And in his camera bag, along with pencil shavings was, <laughs> was old, you know, expired 35 millimeter. And That's I great. mean, obviously probably from the eighties, like I don't remember ever seeing a camera in his hand mm-hmm. like at all. So, um, yeah, I maybe have like three more shots before I can take it in and see if anything turned out. Nice. That's yeah. cool. That, it's so fun. Like, because because my my grandparents i don't remember any of them ever having a camera ever Mm -hmm. doing anything with any of that but as they have aged they've just been like oh and and because you know i've been a photographer for over a decade now they're like oh yeah photography john and then there's like hey there's i got this old camera uh, that i've had for who knows how long you interested in this and um like I, my grandmother gave me an old, like the uh, medium format, uh, like brownie mm-hmm. camera. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was able to fix it up. So the shutter worked and everything and just took that to the pool uh, over last summer and took some photos with the kids. And it looked like we were in the seventies, just That's the way awesome. it, yeah, it was, it was so fun. I need to, it's like, sitting up on my shelf right now i need to get that down and shoot some more with that because that is is a lot of fun yeah but, i like doing that those um cameras on personal time yes same same yeah. or like extra something where someone's not paying uh-huh. me to bring it along yeah. to a wedding <laughs> yeah. but i did yeah. anyway <laughs> right right exactly. so. Awesome. Okay. So Catherine, where can people find you? Where can they follow along and uh and connect online? Yeah. Um, Catherine Beth Photography, kind of around the board. Instagram, CatherineBethPhotography.com for my website. I'm mostly on Instagram. Um, cool. I'm Catherine Beth Photography, wedding and family photographer on Facebook. <laughs> it's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I'll have all of those linked for everyone so y'all can just scroll on down to the show notes and find that. And then I also, uh, I'll have your uh, your uh, freebie for everyone yes. uh, linked awesome. in the show notes as well so y'all can grab that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and thank you so much for that. That is, that is so, so great. Um, I'm excited to, I'm going to check that out as well. Yes, please. Um, yeah. But yeah, well, thank you no, so I'm much excited. for being yeah yeah thank you for for taking me on and tackling an uncomfortable conversation um and i think even you know the fellows in the wedding industry i feel like same like get this freebie and read up on what your peers are going through and so maybe you can have just a little bit more understanding of like when they ask for emergency situation and need help there it might be a little bit more loaded than you think it is Right. Um, and even further of an emergency than you could even imagine. Um, so you picking up that phone and saying, yes, I'll help you out means the world. So, yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that is something like you said, you know, we, these are topics that have kind of been, you know, shied away from, um, mm-hmm. over the years. And I think it is so important, uh, for guys to, uh, to have these conversations and to mm-hmm. be there for, uh, you know, f- for women whenever you know y'all need us, and mm-hmm. and not just be like, oh, I don't know, this stuff right. I don't know about, so I am not going to be here. But like, yeah, educating yourself, listening to to people, having conversations, right. um, it just it's it makes for a much more well-rounded life and, uh, mm-hmm. and able to be there for, uh, your friends. So, yeah. Well, and then so also guys, check like <laughs> you can relate to the brides more too, you know, cause exactly. there are times yeah. at weddings where they are going to be candid about some things that you have the opportunity to be like, Oh, I'm sorry about, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Cool. But, Awesome. Well, Catherine, this has been so great. I really enjoyed this. Um, I, I knew, I I knew that this would be a different conversation. I'm glad that it wasn't like super, super, well, I don't know. It it wasn't like super uncomfortable, but like, I also had the mindset of like, this is going to be a good conversation. I'm going to learn some stuff. I definitely learned some stuff. Uh, and, uh, just really empowered me to be more, um, more connecting and like, uh, yeah, even, even more, uh, networking and and like there for, for other people. So thank you so much for, for coming on the show today. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. That was my, my pleasure. This is really great. Thank you so much. Absolutely.